Thank you for joining us. This is Harvest News on Tuesdays. <laughs> yes. Coming to you live from Harvest Fellowship Church, I'm Michael Riva. And I'm Ryan Stockstrom. <laughs> Throwing the bloopers from the it outtakes. Recording? It's recording right now. <laughs> okay. Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome. Mr. Mike Riva and I are here to join you for our weekend in review. And uh, we had another great Sunday this week, didn't we, Mike? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was, I think we were talking earlier and you said it had a great atmosphere. Yeah, definitely. I feel like there was a good energy um, um, from worship down to the message. It was just a great energy in the building and, and uh, good fellowship afterward. People talking and hanging out and this is all around pretty good Sunday this week. Nice. And I, I was able to host the Next Steps class, which is kind of like our intro to Harvest class. And we talk about where everyone's at in their faith journey. And uh, we had four people join that class, and it was a really great connection time. Yeah. 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 And, and, and speaking of atmosphere, like, that is one thing, like, I, I don't want to knock, like, people watching online, because I, I feel like that's a vital part of our ministry now, um, especially for those who have never stepped foot inside these doors um but that is one thing that you miss out on when you can't attend in person right for sure there is a, a completely different feel spending enough time at home you know due to quarantine and whatnot um watching from a computer on your couch or whatever to being in the building completely different feel and you kind of lose out on the aspect of fellowship too like that's one of the biggest things that i get from church is just being around people that want to be near you right want to love on you so yeah and, and who also have that same passion for christ yeah yeah for totally. sure yep awesome so yeah so weekend interview mm -hmm. uh miss tammy jensen led worship again this week uh great worship set um what were those songs again mike uh, first one was House of the Lord, which has become one of my new absolute favorite songs. Mine too. I love House of the Lord. Yeah. Phil Wickham has just got a, a way of writing songs that are, uh, I don't know, they just carry such an, a powerful genuineness to them. Um, and then we did Child of Love, which is just a sweet groove in that song. A uh, really good feel to it as well. It's, it kind of feels retro, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Almost like something out of the 70s. Yeah. I think I said that yesterday too. It's almost like you're listening to an intro to an 80s or 70s and 80s movie. <laughs> Um, uh, but it's a great song, great lyrics, um, yeah. great meaning in it. Great meaning. Death Was Arrested. That was our third song, which another incredibly powerful song, especially when it comes to worship. Um, and then lastly, um, Graves in the Gardens. Oh, yeah. Another one that is so moving that I absolutely love. Uh, Power, powerful song, powerful yeah. truth. Yeah, and, and I really like they, they pull from Scripture quite a bit in there. You know, graves in the gardens, um, bo turning bones into armies, splitting the sea. You know, it talks about so many powerful things, um, incredible, miraculous things that I feel like lose lackluster because they're just, you know, some people almost think of them as folklore or something, you know, fairy tale stuff because we don't see that necessarily so much today. But it's such a powerful truth, scriptural truth. And so it's nice to be reminded of that and, and yeah. come into worship with that. Amen. Amen. And I felt like um, kind of the theme of, of thankfulness and God's supply and sufficiency ran through a lot of those songs. And probably because I, you know, was preparing for the message and I, I caught those as we were singing. But, um, you know, so so this week uh, my message was actually inspired. It, I titled it Be Thankful God Has No Shortages. Uh, but uh, I was talking with Pam last Monday and she said, Brian, I watched this 60 minutes video and the whole thing was all about the shortage thing. And, and she explained how it's, you know, being driven by greed and, and by uh, miscalculations of how much the demand actually is. So uh, it was really interesting to do. I did a little bit of study myself and shared that as part of the message. But um, ultimately, like we're in a fiasco. Uh, we're going to be paying for it for a while. Uh, add in the the inflation problem we have right now, and um, man, life's getting spendy. What do you think? I heard that. Uh -huh. well, not only that, but speaking of shortages, I mean, going to Walmart even, um, just doing our normal grocery shopping, and, and shelves are empty. Um, you order something online, and it's um, you know, I, I ordered a product online, and February is the day that I might get it. You know, so um, it affects so many different things. Everything's costing more and taking longer to get here. So tough. Exactly. And so I segued from that into the fact that God has no shortages, right? Like 
He has he does not have a supply problem, <clears throat> and uh, ultimately, just just the idea that that everything that we need internally, God has a full supply of. He's got everything we need for life and joy and peace and and righteousness and 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 all the things that really matter: forgiveness, relationships, love. Like these are all things that that fill the most important part of our hearts. Mm-hmm. But in addition, he also promises to take care of our needs and yeah. and um, not to keep not to preach again. But just j- it, if you get a chance this week, read Matthew six, because I think like Matthew six, it, it incur- Jesus is talking. He's saying, why are you worrying about what you're going to wear and what you're going to eat and and all these things? And, and basically, it's a call to trust God to care for our needs and be our supply with our physical needs as well. Uh, did you have anything you want to add there, Mike? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, one of the things we were going to touch on was um, things that we're thankful for, and this really ties into one of my, my biggest things. Uh, nice. um, you talked about the, the storehouse and, and how God is ingredient. He wants to bless us. And it made me think of Malachi 3.10, and that says, uh, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be room enough for you to receive it. <clears throat> so nice. I love um, how God like drops the challenge. Right. Yeah. But, um, it reminds me of in, in 2018, you know, my household, we went through a, a major financial crisis. You know, I had a lot of back problems and was, you know, unable to work. And with that, my wife had to actually stay home and take care of me. Um, so we went, you know, through our savings rather quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went through our savings rather quick. It was, um, I mean, I remember um, not being able to buy milk and eggs at the store. That's how broke we were. But anytime we got money, we decided we're going to tithe and we're going to trust that God's going to take care of us. And so $100, we, we gave 10 of that to to Harvest and and uh, just to, to God's kingdom and what was happening um, in our community. And and it was amazing that even though I had two dollars to my name, every single month my bills were paid. Some, um, you know, I would get some sort of rebate in, or some person would just, you know, hey, I wanted to bless you with this. And so it's amazing that when we're faithful and and obedient to God, how much God wants to just take care of us and love us. And that's something that I'm just so incredibly thankful for. Um, and I feel like that was a really um, big changing point in my faith and and kind of my my growing in my faith as a, a little Christian at that point. That's awesome. Um, just seeing yeah. God's promise come, come true for us. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. While you're flipping pages there, like one of my um, things that, and, and I, my, my challenge this week was to recall the ways that God has come through for you in the past. <clears throat> and so uh, one of the ways that God took care of us is when we were young, um, our first two children were born premature so Sam, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember the facts now, but I want to say he was like 32 weeks old when he was born and just a wee little lad, you know, like, like four pounds, I think. Wow. And uh, so, but anyway, we had to learn like, God, we're going to trust you through this. And, but you've seen our kids, they're big, they're healthy. <laughs> like, so he and Ashton were both born premature and with our girls, Jess was actually on progesterone shots, and they, she was able to carry them full term. But um, you know, just uh, an amazing thing how God took care of us. And like that was the first time that uh, I, I, I had heard it said that when you're going through a major struggle and people are praying for you, that you actually sense the prayers of the people who are praying for you. That was the first time I'm like, wow, somehow I know God's got this. Hmm. And, and I really could sense the support that we were receiving in prayer. So that, that was definitely, that's definitely one of my top uh, number one uh, ways that God came through for our family. Right on. Yeah. Uh, it'd be a shame if I didn't say this one. My, my number one um, would be our son, Anders. My wife and I had a, a beautiful baby boy in July of, 20, <laughs> July of 2020. So it was super awesome. He's a COVID baby. Um, everything went well, but... Uh, we had tried for seven, eight years um, for a child, and it, it became very discouraging. And um, and we brought that to God so many times, and we just felt like, God, why aren't you hearing us? Why aren't you listening? And um, there was kind of a humbling aspect. We were doing a, a leadership group, actually, at Pastor Ryan's house. 
And in the midst of that, we, we realized that we kept saying, God, why won't you give us a baby? God, you keep saying you're going to give us a kid. Why won't you give us a kid? And we had to sit and, and, and really think about it and say, you know what? God, you've promised us this child. And you've, you've given us this child you know, in spirit, and we know. And so we had to decide, we're just going to be thankful that God is going to be, you know, that's gonna, he's going to come through on his promise. Mm. And then we asked the group to just, will you help us pray about just believing that God is going to come through for us, that this promise, you know, has come to pass. Real quick, like, prior to this, you had received a word, right, about actually yeah. getting pregnant. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You were kind of mad. I, remember. I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a prophetic speaker come and, and talk. Um, and, uh, yeah, he had mentioned that we're going to be biblical parents. And, uh, and that was really hard. That was almost uh, an angering point in my relationship with God and, like, you know, God, you're prophesying I'm, I'm going to have a kid, and here I am six months later. Where's my child, you know? Because it had been how many years? Said, yeah, like seven, seven or eight years, trying. yeah. Yeah, wow. And, uh, and so we just decided this one night at this group, you know what? We're going about this the wrong way. God's already said he's going to give us his kids, so will you pray for us to believe this? Pray for our faith in this. And a week later, to the day, a week later, we found out we were pregnant. And uh, again, that's just a, a testimony of just God wants to bless us. He loves us. And, uh, and I'm so incredibly thankful for that. And, I'm, and I love having just an amazing church family coming back to fellowship, full circle here. Because yeah. um, I don't feel like I would have come to that realization or, or, you know, that thought had I not had inspiration from people in our group and people that were lifting us up in prayer. Um, so another testament to just being here on Sunday. It's so important to have that you know, physical fellowship with others instead of just a virtual side of it. So, right on. Yeah. Cool. So what are, what are some of the highlights you got there from the message? That... Uh, you, you made a comment in here. It says, sometimes we trivialize, trivialize the words thank you in the English language. We, mo- we know they might be the right words to say, but sometimes we become so rote that they lose any heart connection. Oh, man, like hit me to the core. We do that with so many different things. I know in my house, you know, um, if my wife and I are doing something um, or having a good conversation and then the conversation kind of drops off and there's like a, a blank moment where the no words are getting said, we'll fill that void with, I love you. I love you too. And, uh, but it's amazing how almost automatic some of these things that we say can become. You sure. know, it's almost, um, now I love you and become a, a habit thing for saying instead of, um, it being more genuine. Not that I don't love her, but, um, you know, the context and what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. Yeah. Sometimes we, we can, you know, or we can just, you know, make things harder than they really are, you know, harder than they need to be. That's that's so true. Uh, one thing we're doing, or I, I try to pray with my kids every day and um, before school, and they say a prayer too, which is cool. Um, but, like, one thing I encourage them in leading into this time was uh, – you know, I encourage them to, to first address God, you know, just Lord, you know, and, and then a lot of times they'd kind of go into, uh, you know, uh, help me through the school day, you know, help the day go quickly, you know, stuff like that. And I said, hey, why not instead of going there directly, why not the first thing out of your mouth be thank you, you know? And and they've been doing that this week, and I think it's been making a difference. Huh. So. Yeah. I, you know, actually, it's funny because I, I used to take my prayer time and it was more of a wish list than anything. Oh, yeah. We and and I, that, I, right? I, I, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, like, like God, help me through this day. God, I have this problem coming on. Um, can you help me with it? Lord, uh, take care of my money problems. And, and uh, yeah, God is blessing me in all these other different ways. And I'm not even acknowledging the fact that God has blessed me. You know, um, I've got a roof over my head. I've got a beautiful baby boy. I've got an amazing wife who took care of me through my whole um, process of having a back problems. And, right on. and uh, so, yeah, I think it's so important to um, make sure your prayer life isn't just a wish list that you're giving God, that um, we're giving um, praise and recognition to God for the amazing things that he's done in our lives. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Good. Let's uh, let's do one more highlight, and then we've said our probably our number one things that we that we're thankful God has brought us through, and I, we're just going to do our top three together here today. But uh, let's hit one more highlight, and we'll we go kind of right to your, your the end of your message. It says, "When we are thankful for all that God has given us, we are much more apt to give and be generous." 
And I don't really know how I could even, you know, expound on that or even make that any better than it is. You wrote that so stinking well. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, and it, I, I agree with it. You know, like when you, when you start to um, take time to recognize the things that God has done in your life. Um, uh, for example, my sister had done this, and I absolutely loved the idea. Um, she would go home and she would write down, if I had this, my life would be better, or my life would be so much better if, and then she would fill in the blank. And she did that for a week, and that list just got super long. And then the following week, she kept doing that, but then she started saying, but I am thankful for God doing this in my life. Because God has done this, I am thankful. You know. And she started making that list. And what she found was, the more she started to recognize the things she's thankful for and grateful for, the more her wish list went down, and the more that she was um, more likely to go out and do just nice things for people because she yeah. realizes how much she's um, been given by God and blessed by God. She wanted to share that same um, energy of thankfulness to other people. And so I think focusing on the things that God has given us and being thankful is a great way to um, motivate us to want to share that with others. I want others to feel this amazing feeling, this amazing high that you can get. So, yeah, so that's what I got out of that. I thought that was a super powerful statement. Um, yeah. yeah, that's great. What a great exercise that your sister did there. Yeah, that's awesome. Right? Really good. Cool. So, yeah, I guess, uh, let's see. My number two thing I was going to talk about of God coming through has just been seeing God's faithfulness in our church. Like, um, it seems like there's been needs or people that have moved away or whatever the case, and it's like, God, who are we going to get to take care of that? Like, how is this going to happen? And let me tell you, within six months, usually, God is like, someone new has come to the church. Someone has stepped into a role. Someone has uh, come through. And I just came to the realization, I don't know how long ago, probably five, six years ago, that like, God loves his church more than I ever could, right? Like, I love, I love our church, but man, I mean, God loves his church and, and he cares for it. And so, I'm just, uh, I guess that's that's definitely high on my list of ways God comes through is just faithfully being sufficient and taking care of our church family. Yeah, I, I guess uh, my, my number two, and I kind of already mentioned it, but I'm going to touch on it again, is my wife. Um, you know, you know, I had a major back injury that laid me up for a while, and uh, and it was hard on her, you know, because she had to drop everything to take care of me. And not only that, she had to watch me in moments of suffering. I mean, there was times where it was, you know, hollering on the couch. And uh, and I'm so grateful that I have a, a, a wife that assists so strong in her, um, in her spirit. And just she was there to love on me and care for me and take care of whatever I needed. And, uh, and so I just feel so incredibly blessed by that, like, I mean, what more could I ask for? God has given me an amazing wife, an amazing son. And, uh, yeah, that's, I, it's hard to say that that's a number two because it's right up there with Anders. I mean, they're almost equal in number one. So Right on. You better yeah. say Nikki's number one with Anders. Number one with <laughs> Anders, yeah. <laughs> or I love and, and before Anders. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, well, man, now i got to move my wife up the list here. There you go. Sure. I'm, gonna, Jess. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be in the doghouse on this one. But, yeah, man, I, I feel super blessed. And actually, I was going to just say family, but Jess and I have been – just so blessed by both growing up in Christian homes, like, man, what, like, that, like looking back at how God has come through for us, like, he's come through for us in ways that, like, it never became a crisis because he's just provided, you know? Mm -hmm. And and one of the ways that he did that was raising um, Jess and I in, in homes that celebrated Jesus, you know? And so that's been our desire, and I know that's your desire yeah. to do the same thing, so. You know, and uh, coming to... Um, Bringing it back to a conversation we had this morning, um, even on that, growing up in a strong Christian home and having that influence, it's amazing what that has done for our local community. Because you just talked mm -hmm. about your core group of, um, you know, students that kind of had a strong faith, came from a strong background. Yeah, when background. we were in youth group. And, yep. and y'all are, you know, spiritual leaders in our communities, and your guys are impacting the community, um, or Christ is, is impacting the community through you guys, using you guys. And that's a testament to growing up in a household that, exercises that faith and and uh that's amazing that's such a an inspiration to um to lead that example in my household with my son yeah, um, so what you teach your son is what your 
son's son learns. As a, a quote that I heard the other day, what you teach your son is what your son's son learns. That's good. And uh, so um, why not teach him about the good news, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's And, and I would say again, like, it seems like a lot of themes are kind of going full circle here today, but like the idea of like attending church as a family, like that's something we did as a family. And it, it kept our faith, um, you know, strong throughout all these years. And mm-hmm. now I have the privilege of preaching to my childhood pastor, a little intimidating sometimes, <laughs> but uh, Doug and Gail Alstein attend here. And um, uh, just a huge blessing to see that come 360 and where he influenced and led, really helped my father grow up into the ways of the Lord, who then taught me, uh, and now to me um, having the opportunity to preach um, with with them and the congregation is, it's it's pretty just awesome to see how God, His plan is family, right? right. It is. Yeah. It's like let's let's grow the nucleus family at home, and use that to spread the gospel through the world and the church family. And yeah, anyway, I'm yeah. I'm preaching again. You know, Sorry. and that's almost prophetic in a way. I mean, it, if you look at it from Doug's perspective, you know he. You were, you know, this big, and uh-huh. now you're preaching. I mean, think of the opportunities, you know, just with families in our church. How are you impacting the families, and how are you impacting the children in those families? And one day, you're going to be sitting in a congregation with a child that you knew in release time yes. preaching. I mean, come you know, on, I yes, mean, let that's, it be. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, what a, an awesome cycle. And, you know, like Amen. you said, kind of full circle, 360 on that. Um, what a, is to come? Crazy that's thought, that, right. What is to come? That. That's so exciting. That's really cool. Yeah. Good. Well, I think this is a good way to wrap it up. Right. <laughs> Our themes were like this, but uh, hopefully you got something out of it today. We did have a great Sunday. It was a good time to be together in the Lord. Um, invite you, obviously. You're welcome to come and join us every week. Uh, we love you participating online. If you're not ready to take a step in the church door, like, we get it. It can be intimidating. Yep. But I also know numerous people who are like, I'm so glad I took that step. Right. Right. Well, Pam, uh, actually our children's uh, ministry leader, and she's one of them. She leads our release time, and and uh, she's absolutely amazing gal, but I wish I would have come earlier. That was like her one of her biggest yeah. comments that I've heard. Yeah. She followed us online for a while, and she finally got the nerve to come in, and I wish I would have come earlier. And so um, just hopefully that's a little inspiration. We want to see you on Sunday. and yeah. Right on. Yeah. Form that bond, have that fellowship and relationship. Definitely. and. So with that, thanks for watching with us today, and God bless you, and um, have a happy Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, That's in like two days, two and a half days. smokes. Yeah. yeah. I need to go buy a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone.